Hi, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. Today, I want to show you something that's made me question my approach to landscape photography. It's this image which I shot recently in the Peak District and it's a RAW file. It's part of a five shot sequence where I bracketed one stop between each frame and I underexposed this frame by two stops. To understand what's changed, I need to take you back first to 2006 when I got my first digital SLR camera. Back then, cameras didn't have a good dynamic range, even when shooting in the RAW format. In particular, they struggled to capture detail in dark areas. The best advice at the time was to use a technique called exposing to the right, and it's something you may still use today. This required using the camera's exposure compensation to slightly overexpose the image. Whilst doing this, you'd try to avoid clipping in the highlights, but you knew that you could recover limited clipping in post-processing. The advantage of this technique is that you could open up dark shadow areas like we have in this image, but you wouldn't reveal any noise. If you didn't expose to the right, and you tried to lighten these dark areas, you'd usually find lots of noise in there, and very poor image detail. Because of this, exposing to the right quickly became an essential technique for landscape photographers. Even when you were using neutral density graduated filters to balance the exposure, it was still recommended you expose to the right. This technique has been a standard part of my approach since my first camera and I continue to use it today. You also see it discussed and recommended in many of the photography magazines. But this image has convinced me that things have changed and I also need to change my approach to landscape photography. As I mentioned, this image is part of a five shot sequence and this particular frame is underexposed by two stops. At the time, I was also using a three stop reverse neutral density graduated filter on the sky because the contrast in the scene was so high. Let's look now at the correctly exposed image for a moment. Notice the sky has some clipping, and if I try to recover this, I can't make it look natural. That's despite using a three-stop neutral density grad filter. Now let's look at the underexposed image. If you look at the sky in this image, you can see the shape of the sun, and the sky around it isn't as badly clipped. This time when I use the highlights recovery slider, the sky appears much better. Now the real problem that remains with this image is the underexposed areas of deep shadow. But watch what happens when I use the shadows recovery slider. It's easy to recover them and it creates a natural looking image. Importantly, the image appears more natural than when I try to darken an image where I was exposing to the right. If I zoom in to 100% magnification in the shadow areas I recovered, I don't see any problems at all with noise or detail. Having tried this out on lots of images, I'm now convinced that I achieve a better result by not exposing to the right. What I'm going to be doing in the future is exposing for the highlights and not worrying about the shadows. I'll still check the shadows on the camera's histogram just to make sure I'm not seeing lots of clipping, but I'm going to assume that I can recover them during post-processing. If the shadows are extreme and heavily clipped, then I'll probably bracket the shot, but otherwise I don't think I'll bother. Now, I'm sure lots of people watching this will be saying this is obvious and that you've always worked this way. But not everyone has, especially if you moved to digital in the early days before the technology matured. You may even have switched to exposing to the right after reading it was the recommended way to work. I've now convinced myself that it's no longer necessary to work this way and that it's even harmful for the images. So should you stop exposing to the right? Well, I think that's going to depend on your camera and the software you're using for post-processing your RAW files. The best advice I can give is to do some testing. I've found my old cameras with smaller sensors still don't perform well when opening shadow areas when compared to my new Fuji models. Start by taking some multiple exposures in different situations using a range of exposures. Probably two stops under and two stops over in one stop intervals is a good starting point. Once you've downloaded these RAW files, try recovering the shadows and highlight details in each of them. This will give you a good idea of how the brightest and darkest areas of the RAW file respond. 
When you open the shadow areas, try making that area too light, then inspect it with the image magnified to 100%. This should make it easy to spot any problems with noise or poor detail. If you can't see any problems, then everything should be fine and you can forget exposing to the right. Whilst today's video hasn't been about editing techniques, I do think that it's a particularly important topic. Since I stopped exposing to the right, I found that it's easier to get my images to look the way I want them to. If you've been affected by any of the topics in today's video, please leave a comment below. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you.